In today's video, we will be looking at how to graph trig functions. But before we get into actually graphing them, we have to talk about what it means to be a periodic function. Well, a periodic function will repeat a pattern regularly. Um, the interval between the start of two consecutive repeating blocks is called the period. So here I have eight functions graphed. And I'd like you to take a second, pause the video, and try to identify which of these eight graphs are this thing we call periodic. And it's okay if you don't really quite get what periodic means, but I want you to try to figure it out. Try and feel it out and give an opinion on this. So pause the video now. All right, so periodic, it means it repeats itself over and over again. A is periodic because we have this as one cycle, and then it repeats that over and over and over again. B also is periodic because that little nugget right there, that little slant line, that is what's being repeated over and over again. Um, C also is periodic. The cycle that we can identify would be that. Now, the thing to notice here is that although C is periodic, it is not a periodic function because this fails the vertical line test quite substantially and quite awfully. But it is periodic nonetheless. This cycle does repeat itself over and over again. D is not periodic because although it looks like there's definitely a pattern, it's not this thing and then repeating that thing. It's repeating itself higher up. E is periodic. F is periodic. G and H are not. The cycle in E that's being repeated would be that. The cycle in F would be that. Now, what is the period of each of these periodic functions? So it's the length of one cycle. In A, the period is two units. In B, the period is three units. Because that's the length, it, length of X before the cycle repeats itself. The period in C is 3. Again, this isn't a periodic function. It is simply periodic in behavior. We don't talk about period with D because it's not periodic. The period in E is 10 units. The period in F is 4 units. So periodic behavior is behavior that repeats itself over and over and over and over again. Um, you see this with the cycles of the sun, or with our travel around the sun. Um, with the seasons, with high tide and low tide, um, with the phases of the moon. These are all physical quantities that are periodic in nature. Um, and the length of time it takes for one cycle to complete is called the period. The, um, the period for the cycles of the moon is, I think, 28 days. The period for the behavior of the earth around the sun is um, 365 days. You've seen periodic behavior over and over throughout life, but we haven't really analyzed it yet, and that's what we're going to get into. With some periodic functions, we talk about the amplitude. Usually we don't talk about it with funny-looking ones like C, with funny-looking ones like F, B, but we're going to focus on this type E. The amplitude is half the distance between the maximum and minimum. So it's half the distance from there to there. Another way to think of it is it's the distance from the middle of the cycle up to the maximum or down to the minimum. Amplitude will always be measured positive. So we're going to graph trig functions. We're going to graph y equals sine of x and y equals cosine of x. Most of what we do in graphing um, 
is done in radians, however, not exclusively. Um, you do need to pay attention to your mode in your calculator when we're graphing. If your scale is labeled in radians, your calculator must be in radians. But we're going to focus a lot of our energy today on not using the calculator. These are not difficult graphs to make. And to show you how we make this, we're going to involve the unit circle. And I'm going to show you on the web. So here's our good friend, the unit circle. Um, we have all the ordered pairs here labeled. We have, we've got square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half at pi over 6 radians or 30 degrees and all the way around. What we're graphing for sine of x are the y coordinates versus the angle. The angle is the input. The y coordinate, the value of sine, is the output. So watch the red dot as it tracks on the screen here. So as I go, as I increase my angle, notice that red dot is mapping the height of that point on the unit circle. There's pi over 6. What's the height there? The height there is 1 half. There's pi over 4. What's the height there? The height is square root 2 over 2. We could approximate that to be 0.7-ish. There's pi over 3. The height is square root 3 over 2. That's about 0.86. And at 90 degrees, at pi over 2, we're at a height of 1. And now notice we come back down. The height of these points is getting lower. There's 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 6. And at pi radians, the sine is equal to 0. And then we go down into quadrant 3, and we see the same y values, but negative. At 3 pi over 2, we're at 0. I'm sorry, at negative 1. And we continue into the fourth quadrant until we get back to 2 pi radians. And then what happens? We repeat ourselves back around the circle. And then we get back to 4 pi radians, and oh, we repeat ourselves like that. So this is a nice smooth curve here. It's not sharp and pointy like this graph here. It's nice and smooth like E. And what we're going to do to graph this, the easiest way to graph sine, here's 0, 0. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out 1, 2, 3, 4 units. What's the period? Well, the period here is the length of time it, or the length or the amount it takes to go through one full cycle. Well, one full cycle here is 2 pi, or we could label it as 360 degrees. So I'm going to label my x-axis on my fourth unit, 1, 2, 3, 4 is 2 pi. What's halfway through the cycle? Well, that would be pi radians. What's halfway between 0 and pi? That's pi over 2. And what's halfway between pi and 2 pi? That's 3 pi over 2. Now, the highest that sine will ever get is 1. So on the y-axis, I'm going to put 1. And the lowest it will ever go is negative 1. Now we think unit circle. What's the sine of 0? The sine of 0 is 0. What's the sine of pi over 2? The sine of pi over 2 is 1. What's the sine of pi? The sine of pi is 0. The sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. And the sine of 2 pi is 1. What I'm doing is I'm graphing one cycle of my sine curve. And I can now draw, and remember it's a smooth curve. It's not sharp and pointy. We saw that in the applet on the web. I can draw this sine wave, it's called, going through my points, and like that. I can draw another cycle. All I have to do is extend my x-axis and continue my scale. 1, 2, 3, 4. This would be 4 pi. Halfway between 2 pi and 4 pi is 3 pi. And I'm going to follow the same behavior, the same periodic behavior. So at 4 pi, that's going to be at the end of another cycle. 
at 3 pi, that's halfway through the cycle, that's like here at pi. Halfway between 2 pi and 3 pi, I'm going to be at my maximum of 1. And halfway between 3 pi and 4 pi, I'll be at my minimum. And notice we have this repeat of the sine cycle in green here. And I could continue this indefinitely until I got tired or until I reached the end of a specified domain. I have just graphed y equals sine x on the domain 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 4 pi. The amplitude of sine of this sine curve is 1. The period of this sine curve is 2 pi. Or if we're talking in radians, or sorry, in degrees as our units, our period would be 360. All that would change is the way that we have the, our x-axis labeled. Okay, so that's sine. Let's look at cosine. I'm going to show you the same thing on this applet here, cosine. Notice the curve changed. Because the cosine of 0 isn't 0, the cosine of 0 is 1. And then as we move around this circle, the cosine value, the x-coordinate, is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And now it's getting bigger and bigger, but this time the cosine values are negative until we get to pi, where the cosine is negative 1. And we're still negative with our cosine values, and they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Watch the pink dot on the graph. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. And now we're into positive cosine values, positive x coordinates, until we hit 2 pi. Our cosine is 1 again, and then we repeat the cycle over and over and over. And again, we could graph this indefinitely. But let's graph this by hand. y equals cosine x. Same strategy as before. On my x-axis, I'm going to mark off 1, 2, 3, 4 units. My period is 2 pi. That's going to go on the fourth mark. Halfway through my cycle, halfway through one cycle of cosine, the, the x value is pi. Halfway through that, or one-fourth of the way through the cycle, it's pi over 2. And this is 3 pi over 2. The biggest that cosine ever got was 1, and the smallest it ever got was negative 1. Now I'm going to think and graph. What's the cosine of 0? The cosine of 0 is 1. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0. The cosine of pi is negative 1. The cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. And the cosine of 2 pi is 1. And you might be tempted, oh, I'm going to draw a V. No, ladies and gentlemen, this is a nice smooth wave, just like the sine curve. The ends of it aren't pointy. They flatten out. Because what actually happens after this cycle is it repeats itself. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat it. I'm going to put off four more marks. This would be my 4 pi. This would be 3 pi. We're going to repeat the cycle. So at 4 pi, I'm going to have to be back up at 1, ready to restart a new cycle. At 3 pi, halfway through my cycle, I'm at negative 1. We see that here. And in between the high and low point, we hit the 0. And we can draw our nice smooth curve through those points. Again, just like with sine, the amplitude, the distance from the middle of this curve, the x-axis in this case, the amplitude is 1. And you might be looking at this and saying, you know, that looks a lot like the sine curve. And it actually is a lot like the sine curve. Cosine and sine are very, 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 very similar. The difference is what the cosine of 0 and the sine of 0 are. It's sort of the start of the cycle that's going to differ. So 
there you have the basic shape of sine and cosine and from this we can graph any complex sine or cosine equation and we'll get into that in one of the future videos.